Hi fellas, in case you don't know, I'm currently making a horror video game about being lost in abandoned Soviet bunker and after last video I decided to make my game look a little bit more presentable, maybe even good looking. It's mostly because I wanted to put something nice on a thumbnail, cause you know, marketing is like the most important or something. I had a few things on mind I wanted to add to make it look better, things like peeling paint, some trash laying on the floor and maybe dust in the air, you know, to create some atmosphere. But I decided to start by adding shadows, cause you know, shadows often make things look scarier and it's supposed to be horror game after all. And also I thought it's gonna be simple and I will be done with it in like a few days. But as you can see, it's been over two weeks now and shadows were the only thing I did. And you might be asking, what's so complicated about them that it took me so long? So let me tell you how it went. Before I started, I kind of had an idea of how shadows work in games. So confidently, I decided to just start without any plan or research. I don't know why I keep doing that. And quickly I realized that it's a bit more complicated than I thought. Oh, and I'm also stupid, so that didn't help. But to understand what was so difficult about it, let me explain shadows for you. Shadows seems like very straightforward thing. If an object is on the way of light, it will cast a shadow on things behind it. But the problem is that computer doesn't really know where things are. Everything you can see on the screen are just flat two-dimensional projections stick together into one image. Games use shaders to make it look like 3D by making things that are supposed to be closer to you bigger and things that are supposed to be farther away appear smaller. So how computer knows which part of the image are in the shadows and which aren't? To do that, technique called shadow mapping is used and this is how it works. First, entire 3D scene is rendered from the light's point of view. It's like attaching a camera to the light and taking a photo. Created this way image is not shown to the screen, but it's saved as a shadow map. As you can see, shadow map is black and white. It is that way because we don't really need colors, because it's not gonna be shown to the screen. In this case, brightness represents how far a point is from the light source. Things closer to the light source are darker and things farther away are brighter. Then in the final image, to decide if the point should be in the shadow or not, we calculate this distance again and then check for the corresponding distance in the shadow map. If the distance in the shadow map is smaller, it basically means that there's something closer to the light source, which is blocking the light, which then means that this point should be in the shadow. It seems pretty simple, right? Uh, not really, because I implemented it like that and it didn't work. And I didn't know why. I started changing everything, looking for the cause of the problem, but shadows were just completely all over the place. After many hours of trial and error, I just started losing my mind. It didn't make any sense why it's not working, and I wasn't looking for any tutorials on the internet because I was convinced they just gonna say what I already know. But finally at some point I decided to check how other people did it. And apparently there was some small transform graphics card was doing in the background that I had no idea about. It basically messed up my coordinates and I was sampling wrong pixels on the shadow map. After this small change it just worked. Kind of. Because there was another thing I didn't know about. Shadow map is not completely smooth. It's made of pixels like every other image. And to keep it simple, sometimes pixel will cast shadow on its neighbors, which combined with the rounding error will result in these weird stripes. To fix this, we can push shadows away from the object to create this margin of error. But that creates another problem. Now shadows are not connected to the objects casting them. To solve this problem, we can render only parts of the object that are facing away from the camera while creating a shadow map. So I did that and it didn't change anything. And at this point I think I just need a break from shadows for now. In the end I only set everything to look acceptable and left it that way. So this is how it looks right now. So much work just for it to look like shit. So yeah, I guess that's all I did. And I don't really know how often I want to make these updates, but I want them to be kind of frequent. I mean right now it kind of took a lot of time, but I don't know. We will see. Also, I want to learn OpenGL because Vulkan is pissing me off. And I want to do some electronics because after all I'm studying to be an engineer. So yeah, subscribe my channel and something. Bye.